Hello everyone, welcome to Edu Made Easy. We offer a collection of free resources for IGCSC and checkpoint exams. For more, please visit www.edumadeeasy.com. Today we're going to be solving Edu Made Easy's design question bank for syllabus business study 0450 on the topic of internal and external communication. Let's get started. So starting off, we have a part D question and let's read the extract first. So it says HS, HSN uses batch production to make breakfast cereal. So I'm just highlighting any possible application points you can use. So this can be specific to the business, such as what they're producing, what kind of production they use, how many employees they have, etc. The products are sold using several distribution channels and HSN employs 600 production workers. HSN has problems with many employees leaving and following the dismissal of the operations manager, the human resources director has to recruit a new manager. She said the person must have good communication skills to help solve the communication barriers the HSN has employees. The human resources director has to decide whether to use internal recruitment or external recruitment. Okay, and the question we have here is explain how each of the following could cause communication barriers within HSN. So since this is a part D question, we need two knowledge, two analysis, and two application as well. So language, first of all, so obviously language is a major, major barrier because I mean, it's totally different words that you're using. So the use of new words or vocabulary when like, um, when I use for application, when making breakfast cereal, so the use of new vocabulary or words when making bre uh, breakfast cereals, it, this can cause problems in the production of making cereals. And what this will, this will mean that employees may not understand the message. So what I would write is with the use of different languages, employees will be unable to understand the messages said by everyone, which can cause a disruption to the production of cereals and may also cause um, problems while making problems or miscommunication. Okay, so that's basically I have everything. So with the use of different languages, employees will be unable to understand the message said by everyone, causing a disruption in the production of cereals and may also cause problems and miscommunication. Next uh, barrier is medium of communication. So medium of communication refers to how do we actually portray the message. So this can be calling, texting, email, notice boards, um, letters, etc. So the medium of communication is ex extremely important because for example, if you need feedback, you can't put it on a notice board because everyone's just gonna read it and go, right? And for example, um, uh, if the communication chain is too long, the made message may be lost. So it's important that it um, goes smoothly or only you, you only need like one medium of communication for it for the message to be reached to that particular person. So what I would say is the wrong channel may be used. Um, so messages may not be seen by all 600 employees. So the wrong, uh, which causes do not see the message. Sorry, because of the 600. Yeah, employees not to see the message. For example, if feedback is needed and the medium of communication is a notice board, it is definitely not feasible. 
Yeah. Okay, so that would be my answer. Do you think external recruitment is better than internal recruitment when recruiting a new manager for a large business? So when we think about external and internal, so external is obviously uh, recruiting someone outside of the business while internal is inside the business. One of the main advantages of external recruitment is that they'll have new ideas, experiences, and this could be really good for the business, especially if it's not as uh, creative or innovative. So this could help increase the efficiency of the business. And also, since there's a wider pool of, of candidates which come from outside the business, it improves the chances of finding the most appropriate candidate for the position. And um, also, it avoids risk of upsetting other employees because often in internal recruitment, one of the main disadvantages is that there can be jealousy between co-workers if like one of them only one of them gets promoted and they don't, right? So yeah, those are the advantages of external recruitment. But internal recruitment financially is very, very cheaper. And it's also less time consuming than external recruitment because you don't have to put as much advertising. You don't have to contact advertising agencies or recruitment agencies, sorry. And this obviously reduces expenses for them. Um, and internal recruitment acts as an incentive. So although it does kind of, it may form some kind of jealousy, it does act, act as kind of a motivation for the employees, which reduces the labor turnover. And one of the main advantages is that they already know the business if the employee is internally recruited. They already know kind of the business's ethics, the the ways of the business basically. So it's much easier for them to start in the new position and the business does not have to worry about them not being uh, able to kind of adapt into this setting. So I would probably choose internal recruitment. So I would say no external recruitment is uh, worse, not worse. It's, it's just internal recruitment is better than external recruitment because of the following reasons, which I have mentioned now. And make sure you don't repeat points because you're not you're not gonna get an extra point for repeating a point. It's just gonna be considered as one point. And remember to put two knowledge, two um there's no application, so two analysis and two evaluation. Okay, explain two reasons why choosing the right location for the new salon is important for Colo. So let's read the extract. So Colo owns a successful, uh, successful hairdressing salon in the city center. Is for uh, four part-time employees, and the business has made a profit in each of the last three years. He wants to expand, or he or she wants to expand by opening another hairdressing salon to take advantage of the economic boom. He plans to recruit a manager for the second salon using external recruitment, and has identified two possible candidates for the position. Explain two reasons why choosing the right location for the new salon is important for Colo. So it's extremely important as much as you have like products for you to have the right location, right? Because if you're located in a countryside, but you're, but you're producing luxury products, there's absolutely no use, right? So the uh, one reason I would say for choosing a right location, it will obviously help attract the potential customers, especially who want to get their hair cut, which increases revenue. So helps attract customer, potential customers who want to get their hair cut, which increases revenue. Okay. And then next we can see um, so when we when businesses choose a location, they obviously have to check the rent prices because they are going to be paying that and it has to be obviously lower than the profit because then it's no use paying more rent than making less profit. So rent is important. Um, 
because especially since this is a salon, it's going to be pretty expensive to locate in the city center. And eventually this will increase the fixed cost that um, Colo has. So second is rent as it will be expensive to locate in the city center, which will eventually increase fixed cost. Okay, yeah. Outline two benefits of two WTB of having part-time employees. Let's open it up. WTB is a private limited company. It manufactures breakfast cereals. And WTB has 600 production workers in its factory. Many of its employees are part-time. All employees receive training and managers using delegation. The Human Resources Director is interested in using motivational theories to help improve employee motivation. And the directors plan to expand the business and are considering whether to convert WTB into a public limited company. The advantages of um, having part-time employees to the business, so not to the employee, but to the business. So often with part-time employees, the key thing is they're more flexible in the hours that they can work. So this will be advantageous to WTB who's working in the factory. So they have more flexible work hours so they can work at different times in the factory. And secondly, it will be it will be important because um it reduces labor costs because obviously part-time employees are paid less than full time. So it will reduce labor costs for WTV. Um, yeah. And then for the application, the cost, which is advantageous as WTV has restricted finance as a private limited company. So that's a good one because you're using application, but you're also kind of developing it into a reason because private limited companies obviously are restricted to sharing, sorry, to selling uh, shares to the family and friends, right? So reducing labor costs will just mean they have more money to spend on the business. Okay. DBG is a construction company. Uh, I don't think we have to read this actually. Uh, the question is just a part A, so no application is required. Identify two reasons why effective internal communication is important for a business. Communication is very, very important because that's how you're going to make sure fewer mistakes happen. And also the fact that um, inter effective internal communication, if, if we effectively communicate, it means everyone will be happy, everything will go smoothly. So basically, it just improves productivity as well. Productivity, sorry. Okay, downtown hotel, okay. I'll pause it so you can read it. Okay, so consider three methods Hilda could use to communicate with her employees and recommend which method she should choose if she needs an employee to work late tonight. Justify your answer. So this is very specific. So make sure to read the question very carefully. Um, okay, so I'd choose three methods. I probably would choose telephone for method one. Because the advantage of having a telephone is extremely one-to-one -one communication. So feedback can be immediately received. And you can also ensure that the message has been received and understood by the other party. So basically, it's extremely effective communication. Um, but the disadvantage is obviously there's no written record of the message. So if you need it for evidence in the future, you probably won't have it. And ha having to call everyone every employee will be expensive because I mean, if you take a phone call, it obviously charges you, right? Um, 
yeah that's what i would say the disadvantages next probably email so emails are pretty cheap to send because they take they just need internet and it's a pretty fast way to send a message um and emails can be forwarded to the employees at the same time so you can like cc them meaning the emails can be sent really quickly to all the employees whereas in telephone you have to call each employee individually but the disadvantages of email, you don't really know if they've read it because I don't think there's an option in email to see if they've read it. And they might not have internet connection. Um, I don't know, somehow, but not everyone has internet. Uh, then lastly, yeah, I would probably choose method three. I would choose notice board. Notice board is a cheap method and if you place it somewhere like where everyone passes by, maybe when they're coming in the morning, it can be seen by many staff. So it's a very effective way, but this does not guarantee the fact that it has been read. And the obviously there's no chance for feedback as well. So those are the disadvantages of notice board. I would probably choose Uh, I would probably choose the telephone because even though it can be expensive, it ensures that no mistakes are to be made, which can be a big, a bigger problem if ineffective communication happens. I think that's a really good recommendation. And for the other two, notice boards and email. Emails, just you can't guarantee that they've read it. And internet connection is needed, which not everyone might have. And the notice boards, obviously, you can't guarantee that they've read it and no feedback can be received. Okay. Next question. Neil and Jean need to tell employees about the new service. Identify and explain one advantage and one disadvantage of using email for this communication. I think you have to read this. Okay, so I'll pause this so you can read it. Okay, so one advantage and one disadvantage of using email. So email, as I said before, it's uh, pretty cheap to send to all employees and it's quicker to send to a larger number of people at once because you can just see them in the same email you're sending. And it, there's a copy of the information. So there's a written record so they can refer back to the details if needed in the future. And it's a platform where you can type basically very detailed information. You can format it so it's very nice. And it's basically very clear when you send it from an email. Um, and this for application, you can say, since this is about a catering service, you can say that emails are cheap to send and can be easily sent to all employees. And they can be told about the new catering service. And emails can include all the details, all uh, detailed descriptions about offering catering for weddings or birthday parties. The disadvantages, however, obviously, I said before, um, there's no guarantee that they've read it. So not sure if the message has been received. And if they don't have internet access, there's absolutely no use of sending emails. Um, there may be language barriers that are, that are kind of constricting them from understanding the message. And there's also no body language because body language is extremely important to know how an employee feels when they get a particular message, if they've understood it, if they're not sure, they can immediately see it from the body language. But with email, there's obviously, there's no kind of body language to be seen. So those I would say are the advantages and disadvantages. Okay, like we have Main Street Hotel. We actually don't need the extract for this question. It's a gen general question. Explain four methods a business could use to communicate with its employees. So again, you can do anything you want, really. Um, I would probably do, again, telephone, email, uh, let, uh, sorry, notice board, and maybe a face-to-face -face conversation. So with telephone calls, so it's two-way communication. So it allows discussion, explanation. You can immediately get feedback. However, it is expensive um, and they may not always pick up their phone. 
email, you can send much more detailed information. It's very cheap. It's a very quick way because you can forward it or CC all the employees and send uh, email at once. Um, it's a, there's a written record, so you can see uh, if you need it in the future, it's there. But not everyone has internet access, and there's no guarantee that they have read it. Uh, next with um, notice posters, so you can put it in a very in a place where everyone sees it, so it's more likely to be seen. But there's no chance of feedback. Um, there's no guarantee that they've read it. And with face-to-face -face conversation, it's ex this is probably the best one. So manager can just discuss an issue with an employee right there. Body language can be seen. They can see if they've understood the message or if they have any problems, they can also say that right there, then and there. Um, yeah, but this may, this may be time consuming, especially if the manager has to do it with every employee. So yeah, that could be one of the disadvantages. Okay, um, if any of you have questions, please put them down in the comments and one of our team members will reach out to you. Thank you.